Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about an unusual discovery related to galaxies and specifically related to the evolution of galaxies, something that we really didn't expect because some of those galaxies changed very suddenly. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So when it comes to our own galaxy and also of course our own solar system, we're exceptionally lucky. The Milky Way galaxy that you see right here and of course our own solar system inside of the Milky Way are both extremely quiet. They're not particularly active, nothing major is happening in either one of them and because of this we believe life was able to evolve around um, our planet while at the same time was able to sustain itself for billions of years. Had our galaxy been more active, it's very likely nothing would actually exist on this planet. Now I've talked about quasars in previous videos many many times, but the idea here is that there are galaxies out there that are exceptionally active. As a matter of fact, in one of the recent collaboration video I did with Fraser Kane, one of the questions was, could life exist around a quasar, around a galaxy that's extremely active? And to give you a short version of the answer, no, absolutely not. The amount of energy quasars generate creates so many gamma rays in the entire galaxy that it would literally destroy any life on any planet around the galaxy, even if it was relatively far away from the galaxy as well. So a quasar, which is a very very powerful galactic emission from the middle of the galaxy, from the supermassive black hole in the center, basically destroys life. Now luckily for us, our galaxy is not a quasar. But, for the longest time, we believed that we understood how galactic evolution happens. Just to give you a short version of it, first small galaxies merge, they turn into the so-called starburst galaxies that produce a lot of different stars, then something triggers the quasar stage, and today we believe there are actually two different quasar stages, more powerful red quasar and the much weaker blue quasar, and then all of this evolves into a galaxy possibly similar to the Milky Way or any other galaxy near us. We've actually seen various steps of this process pretty much everywhere in the universe and we've identified several different types of quasars, several different types of starburst galaxies and this allowed us to understand how galaxies evolve and how they switch on, switch off and create various types of emissions from the middle from the supermassive black hole. But we've always believed that this transition stage from let's just say a starburst to a quasar or from a quasar to a quiet galaxy takes a long time, possibly thousands and maybe even millions of years. This is something that we kind of took for granted mostly because we've never really seen galaxies change on the spot until now. So the paper that you can find in the description below was looking at these six galaxies you see right here. Their names are not particularly important right now, but the main point here is that they were not very active. They were what's called as liner galaxies or low ionization nuclear emission line region galaxies. In other words, these are galaxies very similar to the very famous M104 or the Sombrero galaxy that you see on the screen right here that have some emissions in the center but they're not particularly powerful and these are very specific emissions that we believe are caused by possibly occasional matter being absorbed by the black hole in some sense somewhat similar to what you see on the screen here. As the matter falls in, the emissions are released and produce this energy. As a matter of fact, some of the recent observations from Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, do suggest that something is causing our own black hole to kind of light up a little bit too, so it might turn into this so-called liner as well. In other words, it might produce a little bit more emissions in the future. But as they were looking at these six galaxies, they realized something was changing in them. For all six of these galaxies, their emissions were increasing dramatically. They were basically becoming a lot more bright and a lot more active and doing so very, very quickly. And their first assumption was that, well, maybe what they're looking at is basically a typical supermassive black hole just having a little snack. Essentially, there is probably some sort of a star there that's falling apart and as it falls apart, some of its mass is falling into the black hole and thus the luminosity is increasing. 
But um, all of this was not so. As a matter of fact, within about two months time, the luminosity of the black hole for all six of these galaxies has increased so much that all six of them technically turned into quasars. In other words, they were no longer liner galaxies, they were basically these really massive, really powerful quasar galaxies that were now emitting a lot of energy. In other words, they sort of skipped the whole starburst stage and then switched into the quasar stage and became very, very active and very energetic. And this is something that the scientists behind this paper couldn't really explain. Now, they believe that maybe this is actually just a new type of a galaxy we've discovered that switches from the liner galaxy type into the quasar for some reason or another, or maybe we've witnessed something we didn't really expect to witness, some kind of a transitional stage that only happens in certain galaxies. In other words, we're not entirely sure what's really happening here. But there are some slight differences between a typical, a well-known quasar versus what we're seeing here. For example, the bright region right now is only right at the center of the galaxy. But in most quasars, usually this brightness comes from the central region much wider than just the center itself. Now, it's possible that all of this will change over time and maybe these six galaxies will actually become full-fledged quasars given enough time to evolve but for now, they're definitely very different from other quasars we've observed. Nevertheless, though, all of these transitions were so sudden and so dramatic that we just don't really have any modern theories to explain what's happening here. For all we know, maybe this is actually something that happens in a lot more galaxies out there. And here's the scary part. What if this is something that can actually happen in the Milky Way galaxy? What if this is something that could potentially suddenly start around Sagittarius A star, and if this is something that can start so suddenly within only a few months without really giving us any notice, that could be a problem, because if our galaxy suddenly turns into a quasar, which I don't think it will, but if it does, we might be potentially facing an actual mass extinction. Because like I said before, quasars produce so many gamma rays that it will irradiate our planet to the point where nothing will survive. But that's not to say that it's going to happen. I'm just saying that we need to study this in a lot more detail to discover what's really happening in these galaxies, what caused this, and then we need to make sure to understand if it can actually happen in the Milky Way. And if it does happen in the Milky Way and we don't have a technology to escape the galaxy, well, that's game over. We're done. We don't really have any means of escaping the galaxy, and we don't even have any means of escaping our own solar system right now. Although, technically speaking, one science fiction solution to all of this would be to have our planet tidally locked to the location of Sagittarius A star. In other words, if this is the black hole and it's emitting toward our planet, then by having the planet always facing away from this region, the gamma rays only strike this side. The dark side, as you would call it here, would be pretty much protected from these gamma rays, and so in, in that sense would be maybe safe, but the problem of course is that gamma rays will also very likely strip our atmosphere and will probably slowly thin out atmosphere around the whole planet. So in other words, no matter what we try to do and no matter how we try to protect ourselves, once a galaxy turns into a quasar, or I guess the supermassive black hole in the middle does, that's it, that's game over all life ceases to exist and basically the planet disappears. Actually, no, the planet will still be there, it just won't be habitable at all. But I think the more interesting part here is really trying to figure out what happened in those galaxies. What could have caused such a dramatic transition of having a galaxy go from being somewhat active and possibly emitting some energy to suddenly becoming this extremely bright source very, very powerful and essentially reaching the next evolutionary step um, in its existence. And although today we don't really believe our galaxy, the Milky Way, is going to turn into one of these quasars for a very long time, it probably will become one once our galaxy collides with either the Andromeda galaxy or the Triangulum galaxy in about two and a half billion years from now. So there is a chance that one day life on Earth will actually cease to exist after all. But will it happen anytime sooner? So this is something that we do want to discover and this is something we want to study in detail in order for us to understand, I guess in some sense, when is it that all life on Earth finally ends? 
Now, hopefully by then we'll be some kind of an intergalactic species able to cross very large distances in almost no time. But until then, we do need to study this so that we understand it a little bit better. And actually, if you'd like to learn more about recent quasar discoveries, check out some of the videos that are popping up somewhere above my head right now, because there's actually a lot of stuff we've discovered about galaxies in the last few years or so, and some of this stuff is pretty exciting. But once we discover more about what's happening with these six galaxies, and if it's in any way something we should be worried about, I'm going to make sure to do a follow-up video, so make sure to subscribe and come back in the future to learn more about what's really happening here. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and space out, and as always, bye-bye.